All right. <clears throat> but now, this is what the Lord says. He who created you, Jacob, he who formed you, Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt for your ransom. Cush and Seba in your stead. Amen. Amen. Thank you. But first, <laughs> but first, okay, so, um, you know, there was a little boy and he was out in the yard. He seemed sad. He was digging a hole. So the neighbor... The man that lived next door looked over the fence and he said, uh, Johnny, what's going on? You look sad and you're digging a hole. And he said, I'm burying my goldfish. He says, wow, you're burying your goldfish. But that's an awfully big hole for a goldfish. He said, yeah, he's in your cat. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Amen. Amen. Amen to that. I don't know if people like cat jokes, but anyway, um, today's uh, word in um, Isaiah 43 reminds me almost of a romantic poem, the way God speaks here to his people. As he speaks these words, God gives his, his people this assurance a hope. Do not be afraid. I will lift you from fear, he says in this text. Why is God so concerned that his people would be lifted up out of fear? Why does this concern God so much that he actually tells us this in the Bible, according to those that counted 360 times, one for every day, practically? Well, this is the purpose, because fear blinds us to who God really is. Fear blinds us to the promises of God towards us. It's not a, a judgment. It's not condemnation. It's just a reality that God is constantly telling his people to fear not now if this was something that I, I, I gotta be careful how I say this not that something that God could do because God could do all things but if this was something that God just wanted to do wouldn't he just go whoosh, right over you and remove all your fear and not have to tell you he tells us because he wants us to play a part in this to be participants. God is not cruel. And he's not malicious. And he's not going to tell us to do something. That he knows we cannot do for ourselves. So then that means God must know. That we can. If equipped with the right tools. Be people that over come our fears. That doesn't mean fears won't come, but be people that overcome our fears. Fear blinds us to who God is. It blinds us to the powerful name of God. And we never could hear his voice telling us, you are mine. You are mine. You belong to to me. See, that in itself should be one of the tools that we use to drive out fear. Fear comes when we're abandoned. Fear comes when we have no hope. Fear comes when all is dark and black and all is lost and 
Oh my! Before the life of the Christian, God is constantly telling us, you are mine. You're not lost. You're not abandoned. There is hope for you. There is power in my name, and I have given my name to you. Salvation. This salvation story that we read in this book of Isaiah. As God is, is talking to his people. These are people who have uh, um, gone through a lot. They disobeyed God. They were separated from God. And now God wants to bring them back. And God wants to restore them. And he even takes them back to the time of Exodus. He brings them to that time as he makes these, these statements of that if you cross through the river, you, the river won't sweep you away. If you walk through the flames, through the fire, you will not be burnt. Isn't that an amazing promise? But these promises aren't just for the people of Israel of that day. As God talks to Israel, we need to remember one thing that Paul reminds us of, of, reminds us of in the epistles, is that we Christians, as we accept Jesus Christ, we are grafted into the family of Abraham. And so when God speaks to the children of Abraham, he's speaking to us as well. How many of you remember that song? I don't know how many of you sang that song in Sunday school. Father Abraham had lots of sons. Lots of sons had Father Abraham. Right? See, the promise to Abraham was that I'm going to bless you. He said, count the stars in the sky. Count all the sand at the seashore. Count it. Abraham's like, I can't count that. that there are too many to count. He said, that's the way. That's the way. Right? That your children will be. This was a man who couldn't have children until his older age when finally him and Sarah had Isaac. But yet you and I are part of those stars. You and I are part of that sand. You and I are children of Abraham through the injection of the blood of Jesus Christ into our lives. And so these promises that when the water rises, it won't sweep you away. And when you walk through the fire, you won't be burnt. There are promises. They're for us. Does that mean that they won't be fire? He didn't say that. Does that mean that they won't be floods? He didn't say that either. He said, when the floods come and when the fires come, we will survive. You know, this reminds me of the story in the book of Daniel. Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, right? And um, these three young men believed in God, in the Creator God, in the Hebrew God, in the God of Abraham. And um, the king was a pagan king, a, a non-believer. They believed in all their other gods. And somebody talked the king into making a statue of himself. Because they knew that these young men would not bow down to that statue. So in order to get to those men, it was done out of spite, right? They convinced the king, make a statue of yourself and then have the band play. And when the band plays, everybody got to drop. It was almost like musical chairs, you know, but the opposite. When the music stops, everybody's supposed to find a chair. Well, when the band plays, everybody's supposed to drop to their face and worship that statue. Now, in our modern mi mindset, we're like, yeah, right. I would never do that. Hey, you aren't there at the time. And so um, these three young men did not bow to this statue. And the king then had to fulfill his edict. He had to fulfill his word. He didn't want to, but he had to because he already signed the law into place that whoever didn't bow down to the statue would be burnt in a roaring fire. The fire was so hot that the men that were throwing these three young men into the fire themselves got burnt. But the men fell into the fire and the Bible tells us that at that moment, 
their clothes didn't burn. They didn't burn. As a matter of fact, they didn't even stink like smoke. When the king looks in, he says, didn't we put in three men? I see four. And one looks like the son of God. He orders these men back out of the flames. But before all of this happened, the point is this. That when the king said, if you don't bow down to me or to my statue, I'm going to throw you into the fire. What was their answer? We will not bow to you. Right? Our God will deliver us. They had faith. But then they said, and even if he don't. Isn't that part of believing that when we walk through the waters or when the waters come over us, we will not be swept away or when the fires come, we will not be burned. Isn't that part of believing that? That even if God doesn't deliver me, I'm still not going to turn on him. How many of you could say that today? That no matter what happens in my life, even if that still happens, I'm not turning my back on God. Because he claims that I am his. He says, you are mine. This week, um, as a matter of fact, it was Christmas Day. Uh, um, we like to call people we haven't heard from in a while and uh, one of our dear friends, she's a widow now, um, and uh, I don't want to say her name, but we, we were talking on the phone, and um, so she said, why don't you come and visit us? So, you know, the, in the days we live in today, you have, to, you have to clarify, are you all right with having company? Right? Because not everybody's all right with having people coming into the house. And she said, um... I had my, my children over. Now, for me, it's a win-win situation. We're like, what do you mean, win-win situation? She says, well, if I see my children, I win. If I see my children, I get sick and I die. I go to heaven. I win. It's a win-win situation. I'm like, wow. That's the epitome of fear not, isn't it? Now, some of us may call that reckless. But this is her true faith. We can't judge her because of her faith. This is a woman who just lost her husband um, last year. Lost a child. And yet she has that kind of faith that even if I leave this earth, at the end of the day, my security, my my assurance is that I will be with Jesus. If we have that promise, you know, I mean, this is a slippery slope, isn't it? If we have that promise, then, then, then we start to learn. We start to use that as the tools to obey the command of God to do what? To fear not. You are mine, he says. You are mine. We don't want to get sick. We don't want to die. I remember the story of, of the man uh, as the preacher was preaching and, and saying, how many of you want to go to heaven? And everybody raised their hands. And then um, the one guy said, well, you know, the Lord could come at any time. Are you ready to go to heaven right now? And the one man said, well, I didn't know the bus was waiting outside. You know, how many of us are really ready to get on that bus right now? And make that heavenly trip. You are mine. You are mine. You know it reminds me of Revelation. Chapter 21 verses 1 and 4. We kind of use this a lot for what? Right? For funerals right? For funerals and burials. And, and we use this a lot. But, but listen carefully to what it says. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first earth heaven and the first earth had passed away. And there was no longer any sea. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully addressed, beautifully dressed 
for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Now the dwelling of God will be with men, and he will live with them, and they will be his people, and God himself will be their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death, no more mourning, no more crying, no more pain, for the old order of things has passed away. What a wonderful thing, huh? That's amazing. No more tears. No more death. No more crying. Max Licato wrote a children's book called um, You Are Special. And in this book, You Are Special, it talks about a woodcarver. And a woodcarver who, who carved all these wooden dolls. They were called Wimmicks. Now, the Wimmicks had this habit of looking at one another and making these judgments. If you sang well, the Wimmicks would put a star on you. If you were good at athlete, uh, good athlete, good at, at, at athletics, if I could get that out, they'd put a star on you. If you were well to do, they put a star on you. But if you tried things and you didn't quite make it, if you failed, if you weren't good enough, they would put a dot on you. Well, there was this one particular Wimmick, Punchinello, and he was covered in dots from head to toe. It seemed he couldn't do anything right. He was always stumbling. He was always falling. He was always saying the wrong thing. He didn't mean to it, just the way it happened. And others would put dots on him for that. And he was covered from head to toe with dots. No stars. But one day he meets another Wimmick who had no stars and had no dots. She was clean. And he asked, how do you have no dots or stars on you? And she says, I simply don't let them stick to me. And he said, how do you do that? And she said, because I spend every day with the carver, Eli, our maker. And he has convinced me that I am special because he made me. And whenever someone wants to put a dot on me or a star, it just falls off. He's like, could I do that? And she says, sure, go to the carver. Go to the maker, go to Eli and speak with him. So he went to Eli's house and he went in there and the carver sees him. What could I do for you, Punchinello? And he says, I'm covered with dots. I can't do anything right. I don't know if I'm worth it. I don't know if my life is worth it. And Eli picks him up and puts him on the table and tells him, I made you, and I made you the way you are, and you are perfect. You are special. At that minute, as Punchinello got off the table and was walking out the door, he stopped and thought to himself, he means what he said. And when he was convinced of that and left the room, a dot fell off of Punchinello. It's a wonderful story. You could read it. You could. It's, it's a wonderful kid story too. It's a wonderful book to read to kids. How uh, um, God knows us. We're special. He's made us in His image. We are His. He tells us not to fear because we are His. He watches over us. He will not let the waters overcome us. He will not let the fires burn us. But more than that. More than that, he is with us through all of that. Amen. You know, um, we come from all over. In, in, uh, verse fifth, in verse 5 and 6 of that chapter of Isaiah uh, 43, he talks about how uh, um, the 
the children of God will come from the east and the west and the north and the south. And it reminds me of us in this church when we do gather, when we do get together, right? we got people coming from Stroudsburg and, and, and Whitehaven and Blakeslee and, and Wilkesbury and um, uh, from all over, right? Uh, Lower Run Road, from, from, from Bear Creek, from Weatherly, right? We have people coming from, from west and east and south and north gathering here together in the name of our Maker, in the name of our Creator, Jesus Christ. And we are the holy, listen to this, we are the holy elect of God, washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. We inherited this, not because of anything we did, but because of the Son that came. God proved that He will not let the waters overcome us, that He will not let the fires burn us. How? By sending Jesus to die on the cross to tell us the truth that we are special to Him. As His children, we are special to Him. It's part of the will that he left. In Hebrews chapter 9, verse 16 and 18, it says, In the case of a will, it is necessary to prove the death of the one who made it. Because a will is in force only when somebody has died. It never takes effect while the one who made it is living. This is why the first covenant was not put into effect without the blood. Right? That's why animals had to be. How much more the blood of the Son of God that we celebrate this time of year. This baby in a manger who really grew up to die on the cross for us. How much more does that will give us the inheritance that God is with us, that you are mine, that he knows your name, he knows who you are, and he cares for you. You are special in His sight. Well, I'm going to finish here. I'm going to um, today just ask uh, you that are here, you that are watching through Facebook Live, that if you are doubting that you belong to God, if you're doubting that um, God's provision of, of uh, guidance is, is for you, I want to pray for you today. Because He cares for you. If you doubt that you belong to God, remember, He's the one that gives you this message today. You are mine. And so I'm going to pray for you today. I'm going to say a special prayer that God would work in your hearts and lives. That He would cover you with that assurance that even when the floods come, you won't be washed away. How many of you have faced floods? How many of you have faced fires this year? Even beside COVID, right? Whatever it is, whatever it is, bring it to Him today in your heart. Bring it to Him today. Surrender it. Say, Father, I am yours. Yes. Now help me make it through that I will not be washed away and that I will not be burned by these things I'm going through. Let's pray. Father, we come before you. We thank you for, um, for your word. Your word is true. That as you spoke to your people back then, it rings true today to us. For we are your people. You say you are mine. And so these things apply to us. And you tell us not to be afraid. You tell us that you are with us. You tell us that you watch, watch us. You explain to us, Lord, that, that our, our lives are not made up of what other people say about us or what they think of us, but what you say about us and what you think of us. We are made in your image. And we surrender our hearts to you. And because of that, we are special. Father, work in our hearts and lives. 
those that are struggling right now. Father, the, the waves are coming. The, the rivers are rising. Father, I pray for stability in their lives that they would not be washed away. Father, those flames are rising. And just as you delivered those three young men from the flames, I pray, dear God, that you would deliver these people who are hearing my voice right now. Deliver them from the flames, Father. Yes, Lord. We get sick. Ailments come. Pains come. Debt. We get in debt. We, we struggle with finances. We struggle with relationships. But help us see that we are yours. And what you say about us is important. Lord, in every heart and mind that's hearing me right now, bring your peace and let them know that they are yours. In Jesus' name. Amen. Um, let's stand and sing our closing song. Could... Now listen to these words of this song. Absorb the truth that he knows your name. I have a maker. He formed my heart. Can I get a little more volume on that? Before even time began, my life was in his hands. Listen. He knows my name. Make this a confession. He knows my every thought. He sees each tear that falls and hears me when I call. I have a father. He calls me his own. He'll never leave me, no matter where I go. That's awesome. He knows. He knows my name. He knows my every thought. He sees each tear that falls and hears me when I call. See, this is his promise to you, that he knows who you are. Why? Because you are his. He made you. He created you. And he is here with you now. Believe it in your heart. Accept it. Let him guide you that way. Let's sing that again. Here we go. He knows my name. He knows my every thought. He sees each tear that falls and hears me when I call. He knows my name. He sees each tear that falls and hears me when I call. He hears me when I call. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And God's people said, Amen. Amen. Thank you so much.